Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called The Valley Rule by developers Ryan Carrag and Bill Kiley. This is an LD game from the LD29 competition with the theme Beneath the Surface and it's one that I'm really sad that I passed up. It was totally worth playing. I just happened to run into it on itch.io and it's a metroidvania slash puzzle slash platformer and really, really pretty, well done, and amazingly only done in 72 hours. So I think this episode's gonna come across a little bit more like a Let's Play than it is a critique, but I will get most of my critique -y stuff away uh, at the beginning, and then I'm not quite sure how long I'll play into it, because this game's about maybe 12 to 20 minutes long, depending on how much you uh, dawdle along the way, or if you have any trouble solving the fairly straightforward puzzles. Uh, but, you know, it's really good. Let's start it up. The Valley Rule, here we go. So he plays this kind of cat girl, I, well, I assume cat girl, I'm not really sure. I see the little pointed ears and the hair sort of looks feminine, but, you know, I guess could go either way. A uh, character who will accrue some powers as we wander around in this very mysterious and beautiful environment. Uh, and we really aren't sure where to start with going, so I guess I'll just kind of pick a direction and head in it and hope for the best. As I move over to the right, I'm noticing, well, a number of things here. Really nice little details, uh, bits of grass, particle effects and such. Uh, we've also got these things, whatever these are, and, well, they kind of read a little bit like ropes or ladders hanging down. I think if I was to have one criticism, uh, it would probably be that these just read like you can climb them, but you can't. They're just kind of for, uh, you know, visual effect. Uh, then we've got this big gate here with these four triangles on the sides, and what these are actually just kind of keyholes, and we need to go find some powers to go find keys to then unlock that gate, and I believe that's where we finish the world. Uh, so there's a number of things we can explore here. For one thing, this is a gate, and you'll see there's a button right above it. Uh, level design is pretty intelligent in that most of the time you are able to see directly what you're affecting when you affect something. In this case... They did a good job there. And we also have to avoid falling in whatever this white fluid substance is. I've been calling it milk, but, you know, I guess you could take it in a number of directions. Uh, I actually also passed up a direction down here, which I think I don't want to end up in, but I don't remember. Uh, yep, don't want to do that. That's a little bit too far of a gap. I can't quite make that jump. Got great ambience and atmosphere as well. Uh, the music that's playing in the background is very elegant, very classy. And the sound effects also got... They have a kind of a nice retro feel that complements uh, what's going on in the actual visual realm as well. Uh, okay, so we've gone through a door, and this is a checkpoint. We just hit up on that, and we get a game save notification. And this is our first little block puzzle. It's nothing too crazy. I think you guys can probably figure it out pretty quickly. Uh, we need to get all the blocks in play with all the buttons, and we've got a little bit of an annoying corner jump there to make. Uh, so how am I going to reach this because I'm a little bit too short to reach it. My jump height is not quite high enough. We'll push this very, very, very heavy block over a bit, and then we can use that to leverage a jump up to here, knock this down onto the button, oh, and not get stuck in the button or the block, because that's a problem, and then we'll push this down over here, and then we'll step on this one, and then the door opens. Lickety split, no problems. And do want to make sure I save it every opportunity, because, you know, if you fall in, it just restarts you at your last checkpoint, regardless of what progress you've made since then. Not that it's a huge problem if I needed to backtrack. Alright, I obtained the will to climb, so I shall now climb, and we can make good use of that. Uh, we can climb literally any surface that's a solid surface, and we can actually go up or down. Uh, down is like a slide. And the controls are very well implemented in this game. I haven't really talked about them at all yet, but there's not a lot to it, thankfully. Uh, which is for the best, because, you know, you don't want to get too convoluted with these types of games. Uh, we just got up, down, left, and right for basic stuff, and then we've got S for jump, and that's about it. Um, I, I actually appreciate in these types of games, we don't have to get into too many levels of complicated things. You know, there could be a slide, there could be an attack, there could be a backflip, dodge, roll, agility, jump, any kind of sprint thing like that. You know, with this, it lets you very quickly see what it is that you can do to affect the game. So, like, with the single jump climb, like, I know everything I can do right now. If I know the distance my jump is going to work at, I know that's really the only thing I have to worry about. So if I get to a situation where I'm not sure if I can proceed or not, well, I can just kind of test it out very quickly. I don't have to get into, well, what if I slide and then I roll and then I reverse jump and, well, 
It's good for games like Dust Force where you want to have some complexity, but in a thing like this, it's mostly about the exploration and the minor puzzle solving, so I think it does uh, a bit of a disservice to have there be too many controls, but that's just my personal assertion. Alright, so we've opened up another gate there, and let's go through here. And I see a beautiful treasure chest up above. I'd like to go get that, but I think we're going to have to make our way to the right. So we've got some rather particular platforming to do. Nothing that I can't handle, of course, but uh, I imagine that I've seen... I've seen easier. You know, there are certainly some ones that I've seen easier. So for sliding down for this kind of a jump, we actually can take our hands completely off the controls and our character will just continue to sort of slowly slide down. So you want to make sure that we're low enough that we're not going to grab that ledge up above, I think is the only uh, criteria to making that jump happen properly. So now I've obtained the will to air jump, which is good news for me, because now I can get over here and get to that checkpoint. And I can probably go ahead and test that out very quickly. Should be mentioned, of course, I kind of know what I'm doing already and know where I'm going, so this is going a bit faster than it did on my first go. Uh, not that it was very obtuse or anything like that the first go either, uh, but I did definitely spend a little bit more time wandering aimlessly, uh, and by a little bit more time, I mean like probably two or three minutes total, not like a long time. I was also talking with a friend in the background at the same time too, so I was a bit distracted. And we've gotten our first keystone that we can now put into the main gate. Uh, I guess since I did that little jumping puzzle, I'll go and save again. And I'm being a little bit save happy, it's not entirely necessary. But now we've got a double jump as well as a wall climb, which means that the world is our oyster, and we can now go wherever we want and do whatever we want, because we are a crazy cat lady or something. Uh, so now we'll head over to the left and see what's going on over here in Milkland. Okay, we can probably fall off of that. There we go. And that is a closed door. Crap. Okay, so I guess we're going to have to go around, hit that button, and come back. And that's not how we do it. That's what happens if you die, by the way. Fall in the milk, and then you reset over at your last checkpoint. Pretty straightforward. And I'm noticing all of these lovely details, too, like this, whatever this little monolith thing is in the background, uh, these sort of shadowed, silhouette looking bits and bobs that happen in the background on the tiles. Uh, it's reminding me a lot of some of the atmosphere that you might find, again, like I mentioned, in Fez or even in Metroid to some degree. Uh, and it has a really good level of differentiation uh, between the foreground and the background, which is a thing that I really do appreciate when a platformer gets that right. Uh, if you're going to do, well, any 2D game, to be honest. You know, this uh, atmosphere is also reminding me a little bit of Super Bros, Sword and Swassery, or uh, even maybe a little bit Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, it's got this, or Ico, uh, sort of a old, ancient, mythical runes and elder gods and all of that kind of thing going on. Which is a lot to say for a game that's made in 72 hours that we can even draw these kind of comparisons. Uh, I would dare say this is probably one of the best fleshed out LD games that I've ever played. So, huge props to the developers on this one. Well, it's uh, one programmer and uh, a musician. So, you know, still counts as developer, I'm not saying not, just like, you know, one person did all the programming on this, and the art as well. Uh, pardon my screwing up this jump a bunch of times, this is actually very uh, particular. I think actually it might be better to just fall in and not grab the wall at all. You've got to pretty much, if you do the slide move, you've got to do it almost like the last couple of frames before you hit into the milk. Um, also, I've noticed, I think you might be able to get like an extra free jump if you spam S as you go up one of these... Uh, walls, because you're doing wall grabs, and then it just kind of, like, lets you keep going a little bit. Alright, guys. We gotta get this jump in. It's not that hard. Alright, three, two, one, jump. Oh, I blew my second jump immediately. It's one of the things about double jumps that seems to happen on occasion, just about every game engine. So there's one jump where you're turning away from the wall, and then there's another jump where you're hanging in the air, and if you do that, that's gonna kill you. So you've got to... I think I really have to slide off of this, maybe. This is probably... That was the jump that I had the most difficulty with my first uh, run-through as well. And now I've opened the door. Now I have to make it back, because there's no save point over here. And if I screw it up, I'm going to have to do that again. Uh, hopefully I can handle it, though. There we go. Mischief managed. Beautiful. And now we can back down here. Where we will present it, we will be presented with, I believe, another block puzzle. Unfortunately, I think all of the puzzles in this are either in the form of block or jumping, and you know that's 
kind of par for the course. I can't say that's too unexpected. Uh, but the character does control pretty well, so I can't say I have a lot of gripes with that either. Oh, come on. I would love a little bit more backstory about what's going on in this game as well, because, I don't know, that something about the atmosphere, it just really does interest me. Uh, so this looks like it could be complex for about five seconds, and then you realize it's really not that bad. Uh, so we're just going to kind of push these down one at a time. There are a total of five buttons, four of which have blocks corresponding with them, and it's actually symmetrical, so we can kind of just do this in both directions. And all is well. And we will unlock another key. I think the only way you could really screw this up is if you push the top blocks off next to the buttons. I'm not sure that they're able to jump that uh, edge. So then you would end up in a position where, like, the block is stuck next to the button and you just you kind of have to reset. And to reset in this, you have to kill yourself. There's no, like, R to respawn button or anything like that, unfortunately. And also probably don't want to botch that leap on the way out. Beautiful. Oops. <laughs> I don't know why I have so much trouble with these easy jumps, man. They're really not that bad. Okay, so we'll go back down. And there's still a gap somewhere on the right side, I think. Is it... Oh, no, we've already done all this stuff. We need to go back to the left now. And there's going to be a way down and a way up. And that should pretty much comprise the rest of the puzzling that will be done in this one. Are you guys not kind of blown away by this? Because I'm totally into it, and I just wish this was like a five hour or more game. I could easily see this going on for a long... Oh no! <laughs> Saved myself from that. I didn't expect to be able to get myself wedged in there. Alright, so we've got another checkpoint... Also, pretty good work uh, with just only having two options as far as, uh, you know, Metroidvania exploration. We really only needed two power-ups in this whole game, and it did the job just fine. Uh, it doesn't need a whole lot of things to be able to interact with either. We pretty much made good work out of just jumping puzzles and buttons, like I said already. Uh, at least it was done in a kind of well-paced way, so it doesn't feel like it's all one and all the other. Alright, here we go. So this is probably going to be the most challenging jumping puzzle. Let's uh, take note, by the way, of where that button is, uh, where it kind of corresponds with the trickling water or fluid, whatever that stuff is. Uh, it's to the right of it. That's what we need to know. Okay, so we're going to go up this, and it's going to probably take me a few tries, so this is not the easiest. Uh, uh, nope. It's uh, it, kind of interesting, as I am a huge Meat Boy fanatic, coming from something like that, where jumps like this are possible, but like very unlikely with a single jump character. And having a double jump character certainly opens up options, but that's not really where the uh, predominant amount of my experience and expertise lies. You know, double jump characters play very differently than single jump. Uh, also characters with huge amounts of run ability and agility, you know, the ability to make triangle jumps is, you know, rather interesting as well, and this is kind of what we're doing here, although, with the added benefit of double jump. Actually, take that back. It's really, this character does not have much in the way of agility, just ability to go out pretty far to the left with a double jump. Sorry, I'm screwing this up. I'll get it. I've done it about three times. The first time I did it, I actually screwed up uh, a jump later on and had to do this again and was a little frustrated. It was a real silly one, too. Oh, no! I keep hitting into the ceiling. It sucks that when you fall, you freaking fall all the way back down, but, you know, the double s uh, stack jumps are not all that bad. It's the going, transitioning from one to the other, from the double to the single sometimes can be a little awkward. There we go. It's like exact. Oh, just blew the second jump for no reason again. All the way back. I would have also loved if there were some secrets in this. Unfortunately, it's pretty much all of what there is to see is part of the game. Uh, you know, in 72 hours, making something this complex, I can't imagine you would have time to implement secrets as well, but uh, I was kind of hoping maybe that's what this was, because this does seem sufficiently out of the way compared to the rest of the puzzles in the game. I thought maybe this was like, oh, is this a thing no one's supposed to do, and I did it? Nah. Totally supposed to do this. Oh! Uh, oh! Uh, last jump. No! I was so close! Darn. 
See, with that wooden platform at the bottom, it didn't require one of those little ladder things to prop me up, uh, or to prop it up. So it makes me wonder why they needed to be implemented for the other ones. Slightly inconsistent, I guess, but who really cares, right? Oh, no! Okay, I'm making this out, actually, to seem even harder than it actually is, I think. This is longer than it took me either of the other times that I climbed it. Well, what I could do is if this ends up taking too many more tries, like, I'll give it one or two more tries, and then I could always just go over to the other area that I'm supposed to go to and leave this to be for you guys to solve, because there is actually a kind of a cool thing up uh, at the top that you don't get to see anywhere else, if I remember correctly. You know, there is a, a bit of a differentiation in the visual theme, which I always appreciate. I figured they uh, already kind of drafted this sprite set, and they were just going to kind of work within that art style for the whole thing. But no, there is a little bit of a, a variance there. Okay, one more try. Now I'm just getting frustrated. I want to solve it, because, hey, I want to beat this game properly. But I do also want you to play it yourselves, too. And hopefully the keyboard clacking is not too deafening. Oh, come on, man! Alright, fine, we'll go somewhere else and die in the milk for good measure. It's cool. Oh, the music came back. I didn't even realize how quiet it was in there. So those doors are going to stay open. We can revisit that later. And the only other place that I need to go is going to be upstairs and to the left. Uh, not over here. Through the gate, I believe. And then a little cubby hole that you might not have even noticed is there. We'll take you up. And we'll just do one of these. And in there. And what do we have? Well, a fairly straightforward... I'd say introduction to what we just had to do in the other realm. This one is a million times easier, though. So, I guess if we were to look at difficulty levels, that one I was just at is probably the final area that we're supposed to visit. And with that, I guess I will bring our episode to a close. I definitely recommend that you go give this a try. You can play it for free right in your browser. Again, the title is The Valley Rule, and it was created in only 72 hours. You guys need to let me know what you think of this one, because I think this is a very exceptional game for that amount of time done, and I would absolutely pay for more of this game, 100%, no doubt in my mind. Uh, I don't think there's enough games that are just kind of puzzly exploration Metroidvania games without really combat or things to muddy up what could be a pretty successful formula. And when you have great atmosphere like this, it makes it really easy uh, to want to get behind that idea. So let me know what you think in the comments. Go give this a play yourself. Like I said, totally free play it in your browser. Uh, links are going to be available in the description again, like I said already, I think. Uh, and of course, check out my other stuff too if you haven't already. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I have a website, I'm on Twitch. Uh, all of those things are all linked right in the description as well. So if you feel like it, come give me a visit. Check out some of the other episodes. There's, what, close to 900 episodes of Indie Impressions now. Uh, they're all sorted and categorized over on Indie-Impressions.com. So if you want to give that a visit, you can feel free to go see hundreds more indie games and hopefully discover something awesome that you've never heard of before, because that's what I'm all about. That was a quick way to warp back, actually not having used that save point. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for another day, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like on it, because that does help me uh, spread the word about indie games and help more people find out about what's going on on the channel. And if you like the channel in general, consider subscribing. If you haven't already, new episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. So I look forward to bringing you another one tomorrow, and I hope you have a fantastic night. I will talk to you later.